you probably already believe the media is corrupt. Billion dollar lawsuit against the Fox network. You are fake news. Pretends to be journalism, but is actually propaganda. Never ending lies, smears, conspiracy theories. The media are more crooked than Jimmy Hoffa ever was. But in an age of weaponized myths and disinformation. They didn't want to lose ratings. But I wanted to prove it by getting on the live national news. So I did. You're probably wondering how I pulled this off. It's a pretty funny story, and I'm gonna tell it to you. That's the video. <laughs> right now you're asking a pretty logical question. Why did I wanna manipulate the media? And there's a few reasons. Like most entrepreneurs, I needed external validation. And what says you've made it more than being featured in a major publication? But I didn't have the money to pay for a feature. Yes, they paid for those articles. Two, I wanted my family to love me. They didn't get the whole online business thing and I figured this would help. And three, someone told me I couldn't. So I had my why. Next, I need to figure out the how. And luckily, it was a lot easier than I expected. I started where any great fact-finding mission does, Google. I researched how the press and news industry works, how they source their stories, and decide what to cover. I also asked my friend Tom. Tom's smart, so I figured he'd have some answers. And he did. He told me about this website called HARO, which stands for Help a Reporter Out. And on HARO, reporters post listings looking for people that fit the story they're trying to write. That was my first major discovery to how corrupt media really is. More often than not, the story or angle is decided upon beforehand, and they then go find pieces and people that fit into the story they're trying to tell. And much like my high school English teacher taught me, that's not a great way to write an objective story. So I applied to Haro and found a story that I was a perfect fit for almost instantly. The story was about university students that were using social media to pay off their school loans, which I was. So I applied and was accepted and had the interview all within 48 hours. And only a few days later, I was featured in a piece that was posted on usnews.com, a national media outlet in the States. And this was great, but this wasn't my goal. I wanted live TV because no one really reads. We all know that. But this early success really did have me wondering if it was this easy. And it kind of is, or can be. Well, not everyone will be as lucky as I was, almost anyone can pull off something similar. And that's all thanks to the very flawed media machine we have today. During my extensive research phase, I came across a book that truly opened my eyes to how bullshit the media and news actually are. The book is appropriately titled, Trust Me, I'm Lying, by Ryan Holiday. In this book, Ryan explains how this whole system works and why it's so easy to manipulate. At the top, there are the major media outlets, the ones whose business it is to get as many eyeballs as possible so they can get more money from ads. And they'll stop at nothing nothing to make that happen. And in today's media world, the best way to win is to create as much content as possible and make it as interesting as possible at any cost, even if it's not that accurate. This pressure then gets pushed onto the writers and journalists. They're often paid based on how many pieces they create, not the quality of the pieces. So a constant need for an incredible story naturally leads to more stories being created than they are discovered. So writers, desperate for views and to hit an output quota, come up with a story and then find pieces and people to put it together. So let me break this down for you. Here's how it should go. Something newsworthy happens, it gets covered by the news, the piece is published, hip hip hooray, everyone's happy. But it actually goes like this. A newsworthy concept is created, the piece is then written, and people are found that fit the desired story, even if it's forced, and then they publish it. This makes for a broken system. A problem for the quality of the content that you consume, but perfect for someone desperate for validation. This guy. And that's really why we're all here, to get me on the live national news. So I read through that entire book and learned Ryan's system for manipulating the media. And here's the summary on the system said in my words, not Ryan's. Here's how I took it. First, leverage writer's need for constant content. Come up with a compelling angle for the story that you want created. Make it as interesting as you can, but trust me, they're way more desperate than you realize, especially smaller media outlets, and we can start there and work our way up. Three, pick appropriate outlets for the story that you're trying to tell. Pick a bunch that make any kind of sense. We only need one to say yes to start this process. The next step requires a bit of work. You basically want to write the entire piece for them. Do their job. They're almost always fighting to get that next piece of content out, and this will dramatically increase the chances that they tell your story. Then pitch the angle and story to your desired outlets. Find their email, their Instagram, wherever you can find the journalists that you're trying to get a hold of. Then do this till you get featured in one of the outlets. This is where it gets juicy. Then send the published piece to all the other desired outlets. Craft a unique angle for the story that will increase the chances of the specific outlet saying yes. This will definitely take some research 
search, but you'll find that certain outlets cover certain kinds of stories. Craft your story to make it the closest to that. And since another outlet has already covered it, every future writer will feel way safer covering this story. And the final step is just to rinse and repeat these steps to get to the desired outlet that you really want, which for me was the live national news here in Canada. So I did this. And lucky for me, the US news did most of my heavy lifting. I then found a bunch of writers at my desired outlets and sent them the piece suggesting that they should cover it too. Most replied. And this led to another written piece about me and then getting featured on the live radio, but still no TV. The emails and messages I sent to the TV people went unanswered, but I was not going to quit. I'd yet to achieve my goal. No one listens to the radio and even less people read. I wouldn't get the validation that I needed unless I got on people's TVs, especially the people that made fun of me for doing YouTube. What can I say? I'm petty. So I did a whole another round of outreach while the story was still fresh, now with the other outlets covering it as well. But again, crickets. Pretty broken up by this, I had almost completely given up until one important thing happened. While at my day job, I got a Facebook message request. Why I was even on Facebook, I don't know. But I sure am glad I was. I got a message from someone claiming to be the live news producer for CTV News, the national news outlet I wanted all along. And he said that he wanted to feature me in the live news that night. Seeing as this was a random Facebook message, I was pretty confident this was a total scam, so I told no one. Still, obviously with my goal, I entertained it and I said yes. I drove home from work, excited to find out if I was going to be on the news or lose my savings to a Facebook scam, with both options seeming very possible. I got to my shitty basement apartment, I set up my lights, my webcam, and I joined the news green room, I learned they call it, and realized, holy shit, this is real. I then rushed to Instagram to post a story telling people that I would be on, so I could be on as many TVs as possible. I needed this. I took the interview and was on the live news being broadcasted to all my haters televisions. I didn't have that many haters, to be honest, but I told myself this, along with my family and friends. As soon as the interview was over, I was flooded with messages. It was a sweet night. But that only really lasted about a week and things went back to normal. And my family still didn't get the whole online business thing. But as a wise man once said, it is what it is. So what can we learn from this whole thing? First, don't pay for press unless you're a loser. You can get it for free. I just showed you how. Two, the media is very easy to manipulate and can be used to your benefit. Three, probably most importantly, as a consumer, understand the flawed nature of media and consume everything with a grain of salt. And to prove I'm not full of shit and this all actually happened, I have linked the interview in the description box of this video. And here's a comment from Kelly Bonds. Do not minimize the fact that he is well-spoken and decent looking. Those factors help. Thanks, Kelly. That's all the validation I needed.